everybody uh, my topic title is four quadrant cerebrospinal fluid aspiration a solution to failed spinal i am touching one of the most controversial topic in this area uh, initially we thought of enrolling uh, many patients we have started this study after january 2013 but uh, uh, finally we ended up uh, doing few number of cases so i was thinking uh, whether i should present this study to aora or not but in, as the initial results were very encouraging and the approach was innovative uh, i thought i'll i'll go ahead with this so introduction although the spinal the subarachnoid or intrathecal anesthesia is regarded as one of the most reliable type of regional block methods the possibility of failure has long been recognized uh, various mechanisms for failed spinal anesthesia have been proposed but reports suggesting modification in technique to prevent failed spinal anesthesia are scarce now we are trying to uh, uh, test a hypothesis here we are with an assumption that positive aspiration of cerebrospinal fluid in all the four quadrants by 360 degree rotation of needle before injecting the local anesthetic increases the success rate of spinal anesthesia without affecting safety material methods were all asa 1 and 2 patients with no spinal action uh were given repeat spinal using four quadrant aspiration technique we thought of some study design to you know how uh, how we can put it so that uh, we have done a repeat spinal where no spinal action has taken place repeat volume of local anesthetic was decided as per concerned anesthesiologist procedure was done in all aseptic precautions in sitting position via midline approach using a 25 gauge quinkies needle uh, upon aspiration uh, of free and clear csf flow for first time we have done uh, uh, for the first time aspiration was done after 90 degree rotation of needle hub at a time then once uh, it was rotated in anti clockwise direction and this was followed in all four quadrants to complete 360 degrees of rotation so one aspiration then it was free and clear then again 90 degree free and clear flow so this total 360 degree of aspiration when it was confirmed that it was free and clear we have injected the drug a uh, dorsum of one hand was utilized to anchor firmly against the patient back and the fingers were used to support the needle uh, while the other hand was used to manipulate needle and syringe I'm, i i know the this is uh, there are references that this tech, this is a technically challenging procedure and we have done it with uh, a good amount of practice and uh, local anesthetic drug was injected only after confirmation of free and clear csf fluid in all four quadrants uh our initial um, uh, i don't have a video we have just use a liver lock pcc syringe a local anesthetic mixture and as the bottom you can see we have marked it so as we are rotating after first free clear csf flow we have just rotated in an anti clockwise direction again checked it with uh, after again 90 degree rotation free and clear csf flow so in all four quadrants we have clear we are sure and then only uh we have as you can see the dorsum of hand is supporting the back of the patient so that needle is stabilized a uh, few demographics and uh, other characteristics i'm i'm sure this study uh, as far as conclusion it's just a sort of a pilot study but uh, uh, total six male patient one female patient uh, mean age was 27 they all were young as is status a 1 and 2 volume of drug for repeat spinal was 2.51 with standard deviation of 0.195 type of surgery uh, one was post burn contracture knee three were debridements one fasciotomy one superficial skin grafting one degluing injury results adequate surgical anesthesia was achieved in all seven patients we have done only seven patients and our end point was whether uh, we need to convert it to general anesthesia or not but we were able to uh, go ahead with proper so this was our end point and we have adequate surgical anesthesia results were we have compared with the baseline the systolic diastolic and heart rate throughout the procedure uh, after the induction of anesthesia the systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure and heart rate decreased significantly compared to baseline value 
although the changes in blood pressure and heart rate were uh, statistically significant, there was no corresponding clinical significance as none of the patients developed hypotension or bradycardia. These findings were consistent with traditional pattern of recovery and following uncomplicated spinal anesthesia. All the patients were uh, maintained oxygen saturation 98 to 100%. No neurological sequel was reported within one week post-operatively. Of course, this data is less with seven patients. Uh, there was uh, the basic, uh, if we go and look at the literature, the and Gaston Labert in 1922 said two conditions are absolutely necessary to produce spinal anesthesia. One, the puncture of dura mater and subarachnoid injection of anesthetic drug. Uh, basics, uh, this, these only are the two important conditions. Uh, two important conditions with uh, uh, where, uh, like, you know, two important mechanisms were described. This was from article on, from BJA where they have described the mechanism of failed spinal in spite of having a free and clear CSF flow. First, they have mentioned this as a straddling mechanism and second as a flap wall mechanism. So what is straddling is uh, this, these diagrams the article where if the needle is partially in and out the uh, the drug may not be deposited properly the effect of straddling is some local anesthetic reaches CSF and some in the epidural space sometimes there can be a flip valve mechanism where dura is stuck in you get a good CSF flow but while injecting you end up injecting subdurally so initial CSF pushes the dura outward that aspiration is successful but subsequent injection pushes the dura forward and solution is misplaced. Subdural injection has also been identified as a cause of fail block when subarachnoid injection was intended. Subtle, uh, this was uh, one, uh, um, subtle abnormalities in the placement are impossible to identify at actual time but rotation of needle through 360 degree after the initial appearance of CSF and before check aspiration has been advocated, rotation reduces the risk of membrane, catch, uh, membrane ages catching on the opening. Our observation through these seven cases where we were able to achieve successful spinal anesthesia, uh, all patients were comfortable throughout the procedure, no, no incidence of hypotension or bradycardia. In our opinion, this modification, though it is very with small study, we cannot say, but we, we, we were thoughtful about how we can, uh, so uh, we suggest that probably the modification can be, uh, for administering spinal anesthesia can be extrapolated to all spinal cases. Uh, decrease in incidence of failure rate of spinal anesthesia can be beneficial in patients with obstetric emergency and surgical situations where general anesthesia is best avoided. Conclusion positive aspiration of cerebrospinal. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, type of needle did you use? Yeah. Uh, I have used 25 gauge Quinky's needle for uh, our procedure. Literature review which I have showed has been, um, they are showing that it, when, with that BJ article was showing a Whittaker needle, but uh, as, as I was uh, logically uh, trying to find out what can be the cause of my failure, I think that the same logic of Whittaker as far as misplacement of the tip of the needle, whether partially in dura, uh, can be applicable to our Quinky's needle. We have used Quinky's needle because uh, it is easily available uh, in our hospital and we thought uh, it's okay. Uh, did you mention the height of the block in these patients? Yeah, we we have done only this uh, seven studies. Intraoperatively we have monitored hemodynamic parameters and the block uh, height was T8 to T10. Now why I am asking is yeah. aspirating in four quadrants before injecting. Yeah. I mean, does that enhance yeah, the so yeah, that barber, because uh, it, it, this was, I thought, probably a, con a practice being regularly done in our hospital. So we have learned it from consultant. We have aspirated 0.1 ml with all the four quadrants and we were aware of the fact that barber touch can affect the literature uh, with the support of it. So the barber touch, it was just 0.1 ml and total volume, it was not much of a barber touch which, which has happened in the end. Has any of the patients suffered from PDPH? Yeah, as I have mentioned that we have monitored this patient for seven days post-operatively. As far as it is very, uh, the uh, looking at our case data, it is difficult to define, but for our seven patient, it was, there was no evidence of PDPH.
And have you repeated the spinal in the same sitting or? Yes, yes. The, the spinal was given. I have the bromate scale when patient was able absolutely free movement. We, and these were the selective group of like these are the patients where spinal has not taken up at all at the end of 15 to 20 minutes upon the discretion of the given anesthetist we have repeated the mean uh, we have calculated the dose the dose was different in different patient but total average dose was around 2.5 ml of plain local anesthetist 0.5% mm. Did you go through the literature to find out the failed spinal incidence yes. between Quinky and the Whitaker? And he said, is there a difference from your literature search with the incidence of failed spinal when you use Whitaker compared to Pinky needles? I have looked at uh, literature incidence uh, with expert. The incidence of failed spinal is itself less up to 1%. With trainee, it is, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I have looked at the search. I could found that it was significant with PDPH there was a decrease with but as such per se failed spinal with Quinky or Whitaker I don't I have not able to get with PDPH definitely I got a, uh, that P incidence of PDPH is less with Whitaker and uh, as compared to Quinkies but uh, I was not able to get to with this I'm surprised that you didn't have uh, postural congenitic in these young women uh, I could think of uh, the logical reason for this is we have not actually changed the axis uh, while aspirating. We have actually stabilized the needle and though we have rotated it, but it was a gentle movement and uh, the axis was totally maintained. Uh, we, we were thinking that probably the PDPH can be the only concern, but uh, these patients for seven days we have followed it was not there. Uh, 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 I think we were also searching the exact answer I don't know but uh, really uh, there was no, in, uh, we, we thought it's innovative and uh, we were worried about like the success we were getting was good and we were able to get a free flow. So, Any idea what needle they used prior to you recruiting them in the study? Was that a Whitaker needle, pencil point needle of some kind when they failed final ahead of you approaching them? Or they have they failed with the with the pinky needle in the first attempt. Uh, first attempt, those cases were done by third year resident in our hospital. Uh, what we have seen is they were able, as a matter of protocol, we are, they are always assisted and supervised by the uh, consultants. They have aspirated once. They have able to get a good CSF flow on aspiration, and then they have injected. They have not done any rotation for that. Those cases, but Quinkies, we they have used Quinkies only. They have not used Whitaker. Do you think it will be a good idea to do the study with the Whitaker, looking at the picture that you show me, because there is a segment of needle without the hole sticking in front in Whitaker and sprout needles. Will that be a better needle to study rather than a Quinky? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, you very much. You're studying a very interesting hypothesis. Um, if I understand you correctly, all those seven patients are the failed spinal, yes. and you're repeating it, and your hy hypothesis is that when you do the uh, 360 degree four quadrant aspiration, you'll be able to achieve consistent spinal uh, block, block yes, right? yes, yes. But I think to prove your point, then you should have a, another group that has failed, you repeat the block without doing the whole quadrant and, and look at the success rate. Yeah, I, I, uh, definitely it is difficult to defend my uh, presentation on basis of cases as I have initially said. But I thought this approach, it is a conventional system with uh, spinal people doing in their own way. And if you tell them some different approach, it is very difficult. But I thought it's uh, sharing our practice, we require a more bigger prospective design. And, and the other enough. study I think will be very interesting is do it in every patient and to prove the opposite. If you do not get free flow from the whole quadrant, look at the in failure rate. I think that would be a very interesting study. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for all your suggestions. Thank you, madam.